Close your eyes and find your breath. If you're not sure where the breath is, take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. In other words, create breath sensations in the body. And if they're comfortable, stick with them. If not, you can change. This is one of the main lessons of meditation, is you have some freedom here in the present moment. You can choose to focus on all kinds of things. You can focus on how cold and wet you are, but what does that do? You can focus on the fact that the breath energy is moving in the body, and you can change the way it moves. You can make it move in a way that gives more nourishment to the body. If you look at it in that way, what does that do? This is how you develop discernment, by trying things out and then looking at the results. This is what underlies the quality that the Buddha called analysis of qualities, as you make comparisons in the mind. We hear so much about how wisdom is about seeing the oneness of all things. But the Buddha said, no, wisdom comes from seeing things in pairs and making judgments. You do this, what are the results? You do that, what are the results? Which is better? And then you try a third thing, you make comparisons, which is better then? Keep on trying to get better and better as you make comparisons inside. This is how you see things, this is how discernment works. And it's the most reliable way of coming to some true conclusions inside. In other words, you don't just believe what other people say. You look for yourself, and you have to learn how to look. It's not just a random looking, or looking in whatever way you feel inspired to. You have to stop and think. You have to be systematic about this. We're working on goodness, we're working on happiness. Some people don't like the idea that goodness and happiness can be a skill. They'd prefer that it be spontaneous, serendipity. But that means pain and suffering are also spontaneous, serendipity. And if you want some protection from the suffering that the mind can cause itself, you have to learn how to create the causes for happiness. So it's for our well-being that we try to master these things as a skill, master the ways of the mind as a skill. As the Buddha said, once you learn how to master the ways of the mind, then you can think the thoughts you want to think, and you don't have to think the thoughts you don't. Now we can protect yourself from suffering, because the suffering that weighs down the mind isn't the suffering that comes in from outside. It's the suffering that the mind creates for itself. When you learn how not to create that suffering, then you're released, you're free. So it starts with simple things like this, acting one way, then acting another way, making a comparison, which is better. And as your sensitivity and discernment develop, you find that you can rely on them more and more, so that happiness and goodness can become a real skill in your mind, something you can depend on.